Hey everybody, it's Audrey from Audrey Approved. I did the mid-year book freakout tag recently and one of the questions in that superlative video is what are some of your most anticipated releases for the second half of the year? And I feel like that question got me down into like a deep dive. It got me thinking about all the books that I want to read. And so today I'm going to share 12 anticipated releases. I think all but one are from the third quarter of 2023. So they're all up and coming and they're all books that I like I think I already have hold of the library for all of them or I've put in a request for for my library to get a copy of them the books that I'm really excited about it's a mixture of nonfiction. there's actually a few like thrillers in there I think there's a romance or two and so yeah it, it should span a, a wide range of genres I hope you enjoy and I hope you find something that you're also interested in, in picking up soon so we'll go in order of release date. So first up, I have a July 4th release, which is Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. It's the same author that wrote X Talk. I actually haven't read that one myself, but I remember seeing a lot of good things about it. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of books lately, a lot of romance books, uh, have to do with, or they have a, a main character that's like an ex-boy band member or like a C-list or B-list actor. I recently read, um, Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld, Sittenfield, something like that. I thought that was a lot of fun, but that also had to do with like a, a, a musician, I think, that had been popular when, when he was a lot younger. Anyway, this follows into that theme as well, and it has to do with a ghostwriter who is helping uh, an actor write his memoir, and so there's some element of business in this, but there's obviously going to be a lot of romantic tension it's, you know, uh, what's it called? Business or pleasure. So of course there, there must be a trade-off between it. I love romantic tension in my contemporary uh, romances. That's like the main reason I read contemporary romances. And I do read them actually quite, quite often. It's not, uh, it's not something I talk about a lot on this channel, but I do really enjoy them. So I'm excited for, for business or pleasure. On July 11th, we have two books that I'm interested in that come out. The first one is Eight Bears, Mythic Past and Imperiled Future by Gloria Dickey, which is a piece of nonfiction that I think is going to cover the history of all things bears. You know, bears are something that are culturally significant and also um, they show up a lot in like, uh, you know, mythology in particular, I think. But I'm interested to learn more about bears. I really like bears. I really want to see a polar bear in real life. And you know, I did try to think of eight different bear species and I was not able to <laughs> when I was writing notes for this video. So I'm gonna learn a lot. <laughs> and then the second one in this, uh, or for the same release date is When Crack Was King, A People's History of a Misunderstood Era by Donovan X. Ramsey, which gives me major vibes similar to Dreamland by Sam Quinones, which is a book that I've talked about on the channel before. I did a book pairings video. I paired it with Empire of Pain. And Dreamland is a fantastic piece of nonfiction that gives a really comprehensive history on America's opioid epidemic. And so I'm hoping that When Crack Was King is going to give me a similar level of understanding, but for crack cocaine, crack cocaine, crack coat. Oh my God, I can't say it. Crack cocaine. Um, and so it'll go through the history in the 1980s and the 1990s. I think it'll cover the war on drugs, it'll cover the impact and, um, and importance of, of race within that, um, that political work, um, and really the legacy of, of crack cocaine. So I'm hoping again that I'm going to learn a lot from this one. And then rounding out the July releases is one that gets released on July 18th. It's The Deep Sky by Yuma Kitase, which is a sci-fi mystery thriller that takes place on a spaceship. This isn't a new idea, but uh, a whole bunch of people are sent off to colonize a, a new world and something bad happens. I think a few of these people die and our main character has to figure out what is going on. I do really like this cover. I'm not quite sure why, although it gives me more literary vibes than it does thriller vibes, but we'll we'll see what, what the actual content is is more like. And then on August 1st, we have two pieces of nonfiction, again, that uh, that I think are going to be good. The first is Anansi's Gold, The Man Who Looted the West, Outfoxed Washington, and Swindled the World by Yipika, or Yipoka Yibu, uh, which is about a Ghanaian con artist that apparently scammed 
millions of dollars from I don't know who maybe the US government I'm not quite sure um, but I think it'll have to do it'll, it'll be a combination of Ghanaian history uh, colonialism um, international finance and while I'm not a big fan of um, true crime that has to do with like violent crime I do love true crime stories that are I mean typically about like swindling or robbery or forgery I really like uh, art forgery for example uh, a book that also comes to mind is the feather thief um, which I really love that has to do with stealing uh, feathers of birds of paradise but anyway this seems like it's also again uh, a piece of, of true crime that uh, has to do with a con artist and so I'm hoping it'll be uh, it'll be entertaining and then I mentioned this in my meteor book for you tag but I'm also interested in the underworld journeys to the depths of the ocean by Susan Casey uh, which has to do with the deep sea it covers uh, I think she's gonna follow um, the work that's getting done by a whole bunch of different deep sea scientists and again I don't know much about the bottom of the ocean I think I, I think I read that you we don't we know less about the bottom of the ocean than we do about the universe I think that's uh, I think that's a factoid that sounds right um, and so uh, it should be good and then on August 8th, we have the second thriller. Uh, it's not something that I, not a genre that I usually read, but Whale Fall by Daniel Krauss has caught my eye. Uh, it's a thriller about a scuba diver who has been swallowed by a whale, and he only has, I think, an hour or two in order to escape from this whale. So we're gonna, we're gonna find out how he does that. Um, and then lastly for August, we have Trail of the Lost, the Relentless Search to Bring Home the Missing Hikers of the Pacific Crest Trail by Andrea Lankford. And this is actually, I'm hoping this is a redemption because I have read another book by Andrea Lankford before. I have read Ranger Confidential, which is a book about her time and her experiences in the National Park Service as, as a national park ranger stationed in, I think, the Grand Canyon and Yosemite and a few other places, which I thought was interesting content but organized horribly and it was kind of like a, a haphazard I don't know remembrance of, of all these really idiots that had visited the national parks this seems like it might be it might work better for me because it does have a, a full plot and kind of arc to the storyline it's about the author's search for a missing group of hikers on the Pacific Crest Trail which is the trail that goes from you know um, Mexico to Canada uh, through through the Sierras and um, it quote paints a vivid picture of hiker culture and its complicated relationship with the ever-expanding online realm I don't know I'm intrigued I think it'll be good I'm hoping again that this is a redemption for Andrea Lankford for me on September 12th we have 10 birds that changed the world by Stephen Moss which this cover is so cute. I love this cover so much. Um, which, similar to, to the bear book, is a history, I'm assuming, of not only specific birds, but kind of the, the human relationship with birds, which again, maybe even more so than bears, have, have played a huge role in uh, symbolism and, and religious things, and they also are our relationship with how we how we interact with them. Uh, I've never read anything by this author, but looking at his backlist, he only publishes books about birds. Um, so uh, at least you're staying within his, his genre and his expertise. And I will also throw out that if you are on Instagram and you want to check out a really cool birder page, my favorite bird Instagram is, uh, the handle, I'll put it here, is join us one, two, three, four, five. I love the photos. They're so cute. They're so good. Uh, I would check that out if, if you're interested in for some, some happy bird content. Um, and then on the same day in September, we have You Again by Kate Goldbeck, which is the second romance uh, in this video, which is a debut romance uh, set in New York City. It's a romance between a comedian and a chef. And the blurb calls it enemies to friends to lovers, which I think is more realistic than enemies to lovers. and. Again, I'm going to quote the blurb, it quote, explores the dynamics of co-ed friendship in this sparkling romantic comedy of modern love. I don't know. Again, it, it sounds really good. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm never quite sure what it is about contemporary romance books that speak to me. Um, I tend to be pretty picky with them, but this one I read the, I read the, the book blurb and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna like that one. 
Um, so hopefully I'm right. And then lastly in September we have The Lost Supper, Searching for the Future of Food and the Flavors of the Past by Tars Gresko, which in the first sense of this blurb compares this book to both uh, stuff by Michael Pollan and stuff by Anthony Bourdain. I don't need to read more. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much sold on that. Um, but I think that what this book will cover is not the history of new foods. It's not talking about uh, you know, lab-grown beef or, la or um, what do they call vertical farming, although I am interested in those topics. So if you have books that cover those, those topics, I'd be interested in them. This instead goes not into the future, but into the past and looks at our relationship with food and really the archaeology of food. Um, and there's something about food nonfiction that I find um, really, really interesting. I tend to read a lot of books. I think I have a video on books about food actually on this channel. Um, and so again, I'm, I'm hoping similar to Bourdain, similar to Michael Pollan, um, the author will, will really go deep and, and also include a lot of personal anecdotes and be kind of like a, a nonfiction memoir. Those tend to be the best kind of food pieces that, that work for me. And then lastly is a book that actually doesn't even come out this year. It comes out in spring 2024, um, but it's James by Percival Everett, and I'm just really excited for it. This is uh, the same author who got longlisted for The Trees in the Booker Prize this year. I don't think he won. No, he didn't win. But um, that is a book that I is on my radar and I do want to read it. Um, but this newest release for next year is actually a retelling of Huckleberry Finn, but from the point of view of Jim, who is the black slave that rafts down the Mississippi with uh, Huckleberry Finn in the original Mark Twain. And while I do like retellings, I do feel a little bit saturated in them. I think the market is all about retelling, especially Greek myth retellings. Um, and I am not as interested in those, but this seems like it could be a really subversive read uh, with a lot of different commentary. And so, yeah, again, there are sometimes just books that you read a synopsis and you're like, yep, I'm gonna read that, I'm gonna like that. And that's what I felt when I read uh, the synopsis for James. And so this one is highly anticipated, but I'll have to wait, I think, a good nine or 10 months. Anyway, those are already on uh, already on my holds list. Those are books that I will be eager to get to whenever they come out, sometimes the day that they come out. But yeah, I hope y'all are doing well as always, and I'll see you next time. Bye.